<laughs> Welcome to Raw Food. What's happening, Jay? Woo, what is going on? So much going on in the world. We've got a lot to cover. It is good to see you, T. Good to chat with you, my friend. Mm-hmm. What is the latest on the West Coast? Uh, the latest on the West Coast is uh, fall is here, but it's still that, that warm-ish time. So it, it's, you know, it's whatever. We had the first ever Portola Festival last weekend. It was an insane lineup. I hope they do it again. Uh, did it at this kind of like abandoned docks kind of thing. And the energy was very positive. It was very nice. For folks that are familiar with that area, that is where the Halloween uh, the Halloween party called Ghost Ship, this giant two-day Halloween thing used to be. And really? we had uh, a warehouse fire in Oakland at a warehouse for artists that was also called Ghost Ship. These promotion, the, the Halloween party and this artistic community are very close knit. And so this like 20 year running Halloween party actually shut down because like 40 people of this artistic community died at the at the warehouse of the same name. So it was cool to kind of like re sanctify, like kind of, you know, rechristen this area that used to be this place where we where we have this this really good time for the artistic community and bring in a new thing for the artistic community down there. Um, what was the lineup? Who was in the lineup? Woo! Chemical Brothers, DJ <gasps> Shadow. Um, uh, I went for Kind Music, but they also had uh, everybody from from Disclosure to Drama. Like the the lineup was sick. Wow! Legitimately crazy for a two day thing. Yeah, Charlie XCX, um, uh, Yeji, so many great artists. Wow! How was the weather? The weather that weekend was great. Nice. That weekend was great. What about you? What's happening? What is happening? I am involved in public education against my own better judgment. As usual, the kids are amazing. The adults are lunatics. Can't get out of their own way, let alone the kids' way. The language junior high school kids use with adults is astounding to me. I can't believe the degree that they're allowed to disrespect adults. And the teachers can't say anything because if they get filmed, talking crazy, they get in trouble more than the kid. It it is the most bizarre experience and make no mistake about it. It's intentional. And I stand by that and I will stand by that. And it's been intentional since Brown versus board. Kids want to learn. They want discipline. They want parameters. They respond well to it. They, they grow into it and evolve from it. They crave it. They respond positively to it. And the adults and their reactivity and their um, emotional reductiveness interferes with it every day. It's astounding. Mm. Yeah, because you've had kids pop off to you in your more than 10 years of teaching experience cumulatively now. You've had kids pop off to you, but you've been able to check that shit. It's usually, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's usually you feel them out and they are testing you. And then after you make it clear that you're, you don't play that shit, they respond positively to it. Am I in the ballpark there? Yes. Kids want the discipline. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know anything. And they want the direction. And they want the structure. From the structure, they can evolve into who they are meant to be. But everybody, I mean, we all had to learn how to hold a spoon once. Why would you think you don't need to teach children emotional health, thinking about self-awareness, the importance of the courses that they're taking. How does this affect the trajectory of their lives? What kind of careers do they want to go into? How much money do they need to make in order to have a decent lifestyle? I mean, we need to start. Wealthy people talk about those kids, those things with their children from birth. We're not even teaching that in schools and working class neighborhoods and cities. And I'm astounded as to how it's been allowed to continue that way for so long. But make no mistake about it. It's intentional. Mm -hmm. All the working class schools. What do you think the working class schools are teaching the kids instead? I don't know. I can't, I can't really tell you. Very, very basic. I'm teaching a subject where the other teacher in the same grade, her students are coloring storms. We're, we're doing natural disasters and the theme is hurricanes. And they're drawing posters of hurricanes. And I'm teaching my students the importance of connecting science to the trajectory of their life through the language of science, which is math and science, therefore understanding finance is fundamental to this conversation. And I was reprimanded for doing that, actually, because I went, quote, 
off the curriculum, end quote. Talk about that curriculum, because when we spoke earlier, it sounded like you were actually ahead on the curriculum. And so you wanted to fill the time with something. So you gave them some practical applicability. Right. I, I didn't teach the kids about Satan. I was teaching them about college and the importance of understanding finance especially if they're going to take out college loans. How are they going to pay for school? Are parents helping interest rates? They, they didn't know anything about that. Why the courses they're taking in high school will impact the courses that they take in college and what courses do they make and how can you do it? And what's the most uh, economic, uh, efficiently way of doing it? And I just thought that this was a natural progression of the conversation to connect the dots of what they're doing now to their future. And I was reprimanded for it. I Again, I went off curriculum. But the person who's coloring in their classroom, they're on point. And again, no judgment to that. I, I do think coloring is important. I just didn't think it was important at high school level. Thank you. You're teaching ninth graders and we, we got our coloring books out, really? I can't make this up. A ninth grade science class. We're coloring. And this is supposed to be, tell them what type of school you're at. I'm at a, allegedly a gifted school. Yeah. Kids have to like. It's a public a school, but a gifted one. Yeah. It, kids have to pass a test or whatever. There's an application process. Yes. You have to have a certain grade point average to go to this school, not the junior high school, which shares the school with the high school. So those kids come from the local area and those junior high school kids are night and day to the high school kids. The high school kids are amazing. And make no mistake, I'm not even firing on four cylinders. I'm firing on half a cylinder. I'm in my car every day at 245. I'm not doing anything extra. Like I'm, I'm not doing cartwheels in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Because what you you usually go balls to the wall for a for a ladder for you you will run through a wall for these kids. I've seen you do it. I've seen you bring these kids meals because they are eating chips for dinner and they don't have breakfast and they might get free lunch maybe if if a bully doesn't take it from them. I've seen you you know pick these kids up and take them to school and take these kids home because their mom's a crackhead and they don't know who their dad is. Like you have gone way the extra mile doesn't even do it justice for what you have done for kids in the past you're not doing any of that extra stuff and they're still coming after you they're still mad because you talked about the practical applications of the science class they're taking don't I'm not you know, even making this up are are you know the good scientists are making money they're you know intellectual property don't you understand mm -hmm. that schools like stanford pull in millions of dollars every year from the intellectual property that is developed at Stanford, don't you know that the Google algorithm isn't owned by Google? It's owned by Stanford. No, no. Google founders were, the, were <laughs> developed it while they were studying for a PhD in computer science at Stanford. That is intellectual property. Stanford pulls in millions from the Google algorithm. They put out a booklet. They put out a report of all the money they get from intellectual property, intellectual property, research and development. That is the practical application of science. What can you do with science? You can start the next Google. Anything. What can you do with science? You can start a billion dollar biotech company. What can you do with science? We got a movie about Oppenheimer coming out. Oppenheimer worked at Berkeley and they were they were working on uh developing the atomic bomb. You can you can create and destroy. You can make a ton of money. You can help people or you can hurt people with science. You would think maybe ninth graders who are going to be studying science the next 4 years, hey, if they want to actually be involved in this and maybe want to, you know, if it's something that is really interesting for them, here's all the things you can do with it. Especially if this is supposed to be a gifted school where these kids are supposed to be going wanting to go to college and stuff anyway. You would think parents will want their kids to learn these things, especially from a Berkeley grad. I was reprimanded, period. Go get the coloring books instead. Bring your crayons, kids. See you Monday. We should do a whole episode on your, your experience with teaching, and I would love to bring in some other folks that work on education reform, because your experience, having had a front row seat to all of it, going back to 2010, Unreal. It's exactly what is wrong with public education. And it's intentional. Make no mistake about it. This is an efficient execution of inefficiency. Mm -hmm. School to prison pipeline. And then anybody else who's not in the in the school to prison pipeline, they want you just smart enough to flip burgers and be an obedient citizen who doesn't question shit. And that's it. Everything Preach. else will outsource to India. Preach. I can't disagree with a thing you've said. That's based on my experience and based on the information I've read on this industry. And this is a business like any other. And you wonder why, and don't complain when you say, oh, immigrants are taking their jobs. Don't you understand? These immigrants are coming over with PhDs. 
Do you understand how hard university is at, at, in, in, in schools in Kenya, in Nigeria, in schools in mm-hmm. India? You, you think you had to study hard? These kids got to study like a motherfucker in China. Are you kidding me? You wonder why they're taking your jobs? Yeah, some of them will, will take less, but they're also actually like really, really smarter than you. Wonder yes. why we're not investing in education. And it's intentional. You think ninth graders are coloring at schools in Kenya, in Nigeria, in Germany, in India, Bro. In, China, in Japan? You think that's what ninth graders are doing? Come on. They're doing calculus. Thank you.